Are you ready? Welcome to the 2015 premiere of Adams Cable High School Football as Channel 7 Sports presents action between the North Pocono Trojans and the Western Wayne Wildcats. Brought to you by Adams Cable Service. And by the following Carbondale sponsors. Figlomini Drugstore, locally owned and trusted since 1929. Nick's Excavating and Paving. Main Street Sunoco. By your Napa Auto Parts Store. Tonkin Auto Supply. White's Crossing Sports Shop. Beston's Body Shop and Collision Center. Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated with locations at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street. NJS Systems and Controls, Route 6 Mayfield. By your one-stop lumber and hardware center, the Waymart Building Center. Tom's Floor Shop, Main Street Childs. Waymart Deli. The starting lineups for today's game are presented by Roselle Department Store, Carbondale. It's time to kick off the Adams Cable 2015 high school football season featuring the North Pocono Trojans and the Western Wayne Wildcats. At Varden, with a pregame show and the call of today's game, here's Nick Homick, Dave Sarah, and Steve Young. Guys! Thank you, DC Day, and welcome to another season of Adams Cable Channel 7 High School Football. And today, we are at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden for the season opener between the North Pocono Trojans and the Western Wayne Wildcats. Joining me for the broadcast is Dave Serra, along with Nick Homick behind the camera. And we have a great football game on tap for you tonight. And Dave, opening night, it's always exciting. It's a beautiful night, and uh, we're set for the kickoff. Exactly, Steve. This is what they prepare prepare for all summer. This is what fall camp is about. This is what the off season is about. So tonight it's about controlling the emotions minimize the mistakes and see if you can get out of the gate with a win. Now last year the North Pocono Trojans knocked off the Western Wayne Wildcats. That was a game the Wildcats felt they should have won and tonight they'll be looking for redemption. Well of course Steve, urgency and redemption are the two favorite words of coaches and uh, you know that's a game with some calls that could have went either way so Coach McDonough tonight is looking to you know return the favor at home. Uh, he's got a uh, his former running back is now on North Pocono so it's going to be an interesting game Steve. So we are set for the kickoff of another season here in Varden. It's all coming up after this time out on Adams Cable High School Football. After this time out on Adams Cable High School Football. Everyone is looking for ways to save money today. The total home packages from Adams Cable Service are a great way to do just that. Starting at $69.99 per month, you can get cable, high-speed internet, and unlimited phone service. You're probably paying that much just for one service right now. Call Adams Cable Service today and ask about the total home packages. Cable, internet, and phone starting at only $69.99 per month. Adams Cable Service has a package to meet your needs, and it's the smartest way to save money. Call Adams today. Here's great news from Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale that can save you money and make shopping for your prescriptions more convenient. Figlamini now has an 895 generic drug plan and free local delivery. Figlamini offers diabetic shoes, lift chairs, and home health supplies. That's what sets Figlamini apart from the chains. Locally owned and trusted since 1929. Stop in and see the difference for yourself at Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, where your you're not just a number, your family. Improve the appearance of your property with the help of Nick's Excavating and Paving of Carbondale. Nick's Excavating and Paving provides the highest quality service in residential and commercial excavating, paving and seal coating, demolition, land clearing, foundations, driveways, sidewalks and utility lines. Nick's Excavating and Paving also delivers sand, stone, topsoil and mulch. For prompt professional service, call Nick's Excavating and Paving Carbondale. Back to the gridiron for more Adams Cable High School football. Welcome back to the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden for the season opener here on Adams Cable Channel 7 between the Western Wayne Wildcats and the North Pocono Trojans. And now let's go to Dave Serra as he will have a chat with Western Wayne head coach Don McDonough. Coach McDonough, obviously big night opening night. This is your third 
I believe. And how do you get ready for this? You felt you had a good off season, and you feel everybody's ready to roll. Yeah, you know, we had a good off season. We have a lot of younger guys on our team. Um, we we pretty much put them through the mind of the fire in our two scrimmages. Uh, felt that they they grew up a lot. So, uh, you know, a lot of pre preparation in the off season in the weight room. Um, our summer conditioning and seven on sevens lead us to to this night. So now it's just kind of the haze in the barn. We're just going to see how everything unfolds tonight. One more thing. Do you feel that uh, being home, obviously the home opener, gives you a little bit of an edge? Yeah. You know, uh, anytime you play in your home field, you got the advantage of, of your home crowd. Uh, last year, we had a, a good season. We packed this place. Um, it was standing room only. So I know the, the, the players and, you know, the coaches, we really feed off of that, that uh, adrenaline from, from the crowd. Well, that's one coach ready to go. I'm sure Coach Dolan on the other side is ready to go as well. Back to you, Steve. Yep, thank Steve. You. Yep, thank you. And, of course, the Western Wayne Wildcats had their first winning season in 20 years as they produced an overall mark of six wins and five losses. And Dave Sarah had the opportunity to touch base with North Pocono head coach. Over here with Coach Dolan on the North Pocono sideline pregame warm-ups. Coach, you're facing a team tonight that you beat last year. You know, he's got a monster middle linebacker in Toot. How do you, how do you get ready for a, a, a solid defensive player like him in the middle? Yeah, well, first, we were very fortunate last year. You know, we were very fortunate. Uh, we got a couple of breaks, and, and we, you know, we capitalized. But, um, you know, we know it's not going to be that way this year. Um, he's, he's a good linebacker. He's a good kid inside, uh, you know, at linebacker and at tight end. So he's a key to us. Uh, so we have to find out where he is, and we have to block him, and we have to find where he is in their passing game also. Uh, opening night, you know, you feel that opening night coaches, you worry about offside, you worry about delays of game. You think you, got, you had a good offseason, I'm sure. You're ready to roll tonight, hopefully. Well, yeah, yeah, two different things. Off season, I think we had a great off season. Our kids are working hard in the weight room. I'm very proud of what we're doing in the weight room. I want our kids to have fun tonight. You know, I, I said that to the media here. I think that's such an important part of, of high school football that gets lost sometimes. Um, how about having fun and uh, and flying around and it's just being a high school football game and young kids playing and competing. And then the other stuff, of course, you want to win and that takes care of itself. But um, I want our kids to fly around, have fun, and be physical. If we're physical. I think good things start from there. I come from two programs, uh, Dunmore and Wyoming, yeah, that taught physical football. There's no other way to play the game. So if we're physical, things go your way. You're right. That's, yeah. what, uh, that's what Coach Nick Saban says. Coach Nolan, good luck tonight. Yeah. Steve, back to you. Oh, give me a, something to say about it. Well, you take a look at the North Pocono Trojans, and prior to uh, last year going 4-6 and six, in 2013, 13, they were 2-8. and eight. Before that, they were winless, so they struggled for a few years, and uh, Greg Dolan is trying to get this program back on track to where it once was. Well, of course, Steve. I mean, he, you know, he's doing what Donnie McDonough has done here. He's, you know, the, the culture here, you know, at Western Wayne, as you said, first time in 20 years. He's, you know, his booster club is, uh, I'm call, talking about Coach McDonough, is, is really behind him, as is, I'm sure, up at, up at North Pocono. So, yeah, so, Gre so Greg Dolan, you know, wants to get off to a good start. You know, he's on the road. And uh, you, get, you come out of here with a win. You know, he wants to see his quarterback get settled. You know, Luke Fetter, you're going to see 55 of, I believe, Steve, you're going to go over the stats, 55 of 116 uh, out of 116 attempts. So he wants to see, you know, a little more, little more uh, completion, higher completion percentage out of him, and and we'll see what happens in the in the running game. Well, the North Pocono Trojans are ready to break through the big banner that the cheerleaders are holding up. And uh, Nick, you're on the roof. Uh, Dave and I are inside the booth. Always, Nick is up on the roof doing the camera work. And uh, you know, you take a look at the flag to our left, Nick, and it doesn't look like it's very windy. It's not at it, that point. But it's very windy up here. But really, it's not. It, I don't think it's really having much effect on on the field. Yeah. I mean, you, you just look at the kids and but you know, for the Western girls with the Wayne, sign. They really weren't fighting anything like that. Yeah, but for uh, Western Wayne. If they're going to try to throw the football, it might be a little bit difficult for them because that wind does kick up periodically. Well, with a kid like Scott Wall uh, with an arm like he's got, I don't think you have to worry about that. <laughs> well, Steve, he's he's only a junior. He's back. He seems like he's been here for a long time, and that and that's what Coach McDonough wants to do. He's got his he's got his his uh, his lineup, his team, and here they come out in the field. He really is high on his quarterback. So the Wildcats take the field for the first time in 2015, and we will go to a break and come right back with a look at your pre-game uh, starting lineups brought to you by Roselle Department Store in Carbondale after this timeout on Adams Cable High School Football. 
You're ready for the big game, but how about your car? As you travel through downtown Carbondale, look for the classic yellow, blue, and red Sunoco sign. Drive in and fill up with the fuel of choice from Main Street Sunoco and get the finest performance from your car. At Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale, prompt courteous service is always assured. Congratulations to our local athletes and coaches for their hard work and dedication from the staff and management of Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale. Looking for great prices and special offers on top quality parts and accessories? You'll find them at Napa Auto Parts. Visit Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale for great savings while supplies last. Only at Napa. Stop in and see Glenn, Garth, and the staff at Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale. Your know-how folks. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Welcome back to the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden, along with Dave Serra and Nick Homick. I'm Steve Young, and it's time for your starting lineups for today's game, presented by your back-to-school headquarters, Roselle Department Store in Carbondale, where you'll save up to 40% on all remaining summer apparel during their summer clearance event. It's not too early to start thinking about that formal affair or special occasion. If you need to outfit a wedding party with tuxedos, let the experience of Sam Kalura at Roselle Department Store work for you in a perfectly tailored tuxedo by Sarno and Son. It's back to school time and Roselle offers a great selection of school uniforms for Lakeland, Carbondale area, LaSalle Academy, Holy Cross, Forest City and Valley View and we'll continue with more after our national anthem. That was our national anthem by the Western Wayne Band. You could stop at Roselle Department Store in Carbondale for fast, reliable laundry and dry cleaning services. And always depend on Roselle for unsurpassed quality, style, and value. Sam and the great staff at Roselle Department Store in Carbondale are proud to present your starting lineups for today's game between the Western Wayne Wildcats and the North Pocono Trojans. Offensively for North Pocono at tight end, it is Matt Frolick, a junior at 6'1 and 190, Tom Miner at the split end, a senior at 6'3 and 205 pounds, Matt Slegas is at left tackle, a junior, 6'2 and 275. Jason Metzger, only a sophomore, lines up at right tackle, a 6'1", 240-pounder. David Kessler at left guard, a 6'2", 240-pound junior. Jake Prizwara is at right guard, a 6'2", 250-pound senior. And Ryan Trotter will be at center tonight for the Trojans, a 5'11", 250-pound senior. Luke Fetter is at quarterback. He's a senior, 5'10", 205 pounds. He threw four touchdowns last year, completing 55 of 116 passes for 502 yards. Tyler Musgrave will get the start at fullback for North Pocono, a junior at 6'1 and 205, and Matt Kelly, a senior at 5'8, 165, will line up at tailback. Tim Blaine is at flanker, a senior, 6' and 180 pounds. As we continue along with the Roselle Department Store starting lineups, defensively for Western Wayne, Jim Stein is at left end. He is a senior at 6' and 235 pounds. Bailey Williams at right end, 6' 240 pounds, and a junior. Jake Nagel at left tackle, a senior. Uh, Billy Poley is at uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, linebacker Dakota Sawyer at the weak side linebacker. Brandon Toot is the middle linebacker, and we are underway. And this kick will be caught at the 10-yard line by the North Pocono Trojans, and they find a seam. And on the return, Courtney Harp with a flag on the play takes the football across the 40-yard line for the North Pocono Trojans, and we'll check out the flag. Now, Steve, it's going to be a face mask, uh, and it's going to add 15 to the play. Again, nice return from the, about the 8-yard line all the way up to the 42, and it looks like it's going to be a uh, face mask, and it's going to tack on another 15. So good starting field position, Nick. As you know, as a former coach, it's always uh, fun to start on the opponent's side of the field. Oh, absolutely. That's what you want, a positive to begin the game, and it didn't take long for Harp to get involved. <laughs> no. Uh, Dylan Walk at left corner for Western Wayne, a freshman. Cameron Gilgallon at uh, right corner. Scott Walk at strong safety. And Kobe Salter is at the free safety. So it's North Pocono going to work with the football in excellent field position at the Trojan 46-yard line, first down and 10. As Fetter will... Going to toss play, and on the left side, it's Kelly sweeping around up across midfield, and Kelly breaks a tackle, tiptoes along the far sideline, but not before he picked up a first down for the Trojans. Well, when you get outside, you, you know, you lose contain on the outside. Lots of running room there, Nick, and as you can see, that's uh, couldn't ask for a better start for the Trojans. No, certainly not, and it's just a simple toss play. They just seal the end, and, you know, he was picking up good yardage. So North Pocono... On the move here in the early stages of a scoreless first quarter of football in Varden, getting darker by the minute as the clouds roll in. I hope that's just the sun going down. <laughs> Let's hope so, as Tim Blaine will go in motion for the Trojans. Fetter with a long count, and Fetter will hand it off, and another flag is down on the play. As Musgrave got the call, is uh, on the near side, the pink balloons are going up into the air here in Varden. And the officials, another face mask against the Wildcats. That hurts. Yeah, not the start you wanted, you know, from the from the Western Wayne. It's probably going to be another five-yard uh, penalty. What is it, only a five-yard penalty, Nick, anymore? I think that's a new rule change. Okay. It must be, because I always thought it was 15. I think there is a new rule change. I was reading a little bit about that today. I just did see something about the face mask being changed to five yards. Well, regardless, it's, just, you know, it's the kind of mistake you want to cut down on. But second and one now for the North Pocono Trojans, and they'll continue to pound the football, but this time the Wildcat defense rises to the occasion. And a big stop by the uh, Western Wayne Wildcats, Jim Stein. Make no mistake about it, Western Wayne's got some size up front to, to counter the Pocono's. Well, Stein is 235, Nagel 250, Sterling at 290, and Bailey Williams on the right end is 240. Their nose tackle, I, he looks like uh, he should be playing <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> Maybe he can moonlight, you never know. And he can move, too. Yes, he could, he's quick. And do we have a timeout here? Let's find out what's happening. Heard a whistle. You know, one thing that's going to be interesting to see, you know, conditioning, of course. First game, you usually have a lot of cramping and things like that. Well, the that. clock is still running, so if this is a timeout, uh, somebody better get a hold of the timekeeper here. And uh, a lot of time ran off the clock. That was nope, Courtney, nope. right, Steve? Courtney Harp's first carry for the Trojans? Yeah, I believe it was. Now we'll have to... Uh, Another timeout, Steve. No, this will be uh, an official timeout to adjust the clock. A lot of time rolled off. Uh, Rewind. It's... Well, opening night, that's expected, you know. A few bumps in the road. Scoreless here in the first quarter. And the officials want the uh, timekeeper to put some time on the clock. 10.39 is what the scoreboard reads at the moment. There you go. Wow, 11.25. A lot more time came off of that clock than I thought. <laughs> Here we go. Second down and seven for North Pocono as they operate from the Wildcat 38-yard line. Musgrave will dot the I formation. Blaine comes in motion. Someone moved, and there's a flag. This, Steve, is what you're going to see early on in the high school season, pro season, or college season. It's just the nature of the business. Coaches expect that. You're going to see a little uh, offside. Now, that's the third penalty on the Wildcats. 
Five-yarder will advance the football to the Wildcat 33 and bring up second down and two for North Pocono. Boy, what a gorgeous night. Shorts and shirts, Nick, and then yeah, when, we're here in, when we're here in November, we'll probably be in, be in a parka. I'll be blue. <laughs> Better, the senior quarterback, with uh, comes up to the line of scrimmage, and this time North Pocono will be called for the violation. So a very sluggish beginning to this football game here in Varden. Five-yarder against North Pocono. Moves the football to the Western Wayne 38. Second down and seven for the Trojans. Here in the first quarter, we're scoreless. And this time, Federer with the I formation behind him. Federer on a quick hitter. Musgrave wrapped up by the Wildcat defense. Now, last year, Western Wayne, they were really rolling on offense, scoring almost, averaging almost 29 points a ball game. But defensively, they uh, really struggled, giving up almost 26 points a ball game. Yeah, they uh, they just helped out, you know, getting a track meet with some of these teams, and somebody turned the ball over. That one Mid Valley game we did with them. Yeah, that was a real. <laughs> I think they scored 90 points. <laughs> that was a high-scoring affair. Let's see, the Mid-Valley game, 41-38 uh, was yeah, the final was, score in that one. And I think it happened in a half. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. like it was spaced out all game. Third down and six for North Pocono. Ooh, Federer boy. hands off to Kelly, and he paid the price. Jake Nagel all over the play in the backfield. Pretty much might make it a punting situation. I was wondering earlier if you know, that could possibly be a fourth and go for it. Probably now I think you punt, try to pin them uh, deep, Steve. Yeah, absolutely, especially first first uh, series of the year. Oh, wow, did he read that perfectly? Boy, that was a wake-up call right there. Tom Miner into punt for North Pocono. Two are deep for the Western Wayne Wildcats. Oh, Coach Gabriel, if he was here. <laughs> well, this punt is going to be caught by Kilgallen. Kilgallen up across the 20-yard line with a flag on the play, right. and he's caught at the 32. Yeah. Probably coming back, Steve. Yeah, they, were, they did it right in front of the official. Yeah, an illegal block, Steve, it's going to be. It's coming back. <laughs> so a good return will be nullified by the flag, and Western Wayne will start their opening possession of the 2015 high school football season deep in their own territory. Not the way you want to start off offensively, guys. But don't don't be shocked to see Coach McDonough. Now, I don't think he's going to be afraid here with his with his veteran quarterback. You might see him walk out four receiver sets. North Pocono is going to be forced to. I I I. It, curious to see what he does here. I might want to play conservative, Steve, as you're saying the first down. But I mean, uh, this this, uh, this young coach is not afraid to open up his offense if he has to. Eight minutes and 55 seconds remaining in a scoreless first quarter here in Varden. First down and 10 for Western Wayne from its own nine-yard line. Junior quarterback Scott Walk will go on a handoff, and they'll try to take it around the right side, but there's not too much there as uh, North Pocono had it defended well. Just a stretch play. Similar to you see Peyton Manning run it since, since he's been able to carry a football. And we have a guy on the roster 21. wearing 21, but not, uh, he's wearing 21, but not listed on the uh, program, so. We we'll have to check that. Might be able to, Nick could probably check that out with the Wildcat uh, scouting crew up on the roof. Second down and 11 for Western Wayne. As they will go to work now with Walk rolling out against the grain. A little pass to Dakota Sawyer, and Sawyer has the ball go off his fingertips. Hey, hard hitting here early. Well, safe call there. He was trying to get on the perimeter, and I don't think it was going to go anywhere if he caught it, Nick, as you saw there. So, again, I I, I don't I like the call. I, you know, I like the call. You can't just, you know, run the dive plays up the middle. North Pocono, as you guys were saying, too big up front. Might be tough to just grind it out early on here unless he opens it up with the pass. Yeah, and going back to, you know, Coach Dolan's decision here to punt. 
Smart. It's absolutely. You pin him deep. Now, if you can stop him here, you might come out with better field position than he had. Third down and 13 yards to go for Western Wayne as they operate from uh, their own six yard line. Scott Walk will operate out of the shotgun, back to throw with time, looking, firing downfield, and is it a good catch or was it picked off? I think it's good a catch, Steve. I think that's a good catch to Cameron Kilgallen. He's a junior, 5'9", 155, ran a good pattern and came up with the catch at the 25-yard line to give the Wildcats a very important first down. 20-yard gain. Western Wayne loves that, that skinny post pattern right down the seam. You're forcing that safety to make a decision who he's going to cover. And Nick, he wasn't that wide open. That was a great no, catch. They, they, it was a great catch and great, you know. He's got a good coverage. arm. First down and 10, the Wildcats from their own 25 on the move here in a scoreless first quarter of football. Handoff will go to Humble. the running back. He lost it. Do they recover? Very fortunate to get that bounce. bounce Western that Wayne up. got it back. Yep, That was important. Obviously, you don't want to turn over and you're deep in your own territory. Kobe Sauter is wearing number 21. We have him listed on the program as seven, so we'll make the change on the chart. Onside adjustment. Yeah, that happens. Opening night. Hey, didn't we used to have another guy who used to broadcast with us? Another guy? Yeah. Former uh, basketball coach. I don't know. We'll he talk was... about him a little later. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the Globetrotter. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's out gallivanting somewhere. <laughs> who knows where he is? Probably over in Italy or something like that. At the 20 yard line, the Wildcats. Uh, not able to move the football right on that uh, play. And bodies flying everywhere in that play, including the official. Well, a little misdirection, Nick, with everybody out to the right, a little inside screen, you know, a little jailbreak screen didn't work. North Pocono, again, like you, like we were saying, pretty good defensively with nine guys back. So it's going to be a challenge for yeah, the Wildcats exactly. tonight. There's pretty much not too much they haven't seen. So, you know, a veteran defense, they don't bite on things like that. Third down for Western Wayne. And 13 yards to go. Scott Walk will set them down. Walk on a rollout in trouble. Hey, look at the way he eluded a would-be tackler, turns it upfield, and then is caught at the 20-yard line for a loss of three on the play. Very fortunate that he didn't get blindsided there. He showed some mobility there, and really, Nick, what he did there was he prevented punting from really on your goal line. So although the play didn't get a first down, he got them out of trouble, room for his punter. Yeah, absolutely. He got him out of trouble, and he didn't, you know, try, like he said, overextend the, what he could do. Josh Stevens, a senior, will drop back to punt for the Western Wayne Wildcats. And it's Matt Kelly, deep for North Pocono. Good snap. Oh, this is oh, a dandy boy. punt. Kelly will field it at his own 40, and there goes Kelly with a lot of speed across midfield, and Kelly is popped at the 41 and dropped on the play. Out kicked his coverage, Nick, as you saw. That carried from the 20 all the way to the 40. You know, and he really had good hang time on that. Yeah, too, he but, did. Wow. But Brandon to it. How do you do? Wow. Well, now North Pocono has excellent field position at the Wildcat 39 as they will start this drive with four minutes and 54 seconds to play in a scoreless first quarter here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex. And it's Fetter about to step up to the uh, line of scrimmage. And Luke Fetter who threw four touchdowns last year off the play fake with a flag down and the southpaw dumps it off to Musgrave. Musgrave at the 20 and he will take, will take it into the end zone for an apparent touchdown. There was a flag on the play and it's sitting at the 40 yard line. Left hander made a nice toss there. We'll see the officials. Usually it's in that line play, Steve. And Here's the call. Motion offense. Uh, it's coming back. Well, Nick, you were talking about uh, someone who does broadcast with us, Glenn Muskowski. Not here on opening night. And uh, Dave Sarah filling in. 
And uh, Glenn and his lovely wife, Anne, are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary in Italy. Congratulations to Greg and Anne. And uh, guys, did you ever notice when you see the two together, they're always happy? Every time you see Glenn Moskowski and his wife, Anne. He's always got a smile on his face. Yes, and they are the perfect couple. And uh, they're celebrating 50 years together. So uh, they're in Italy. Glenn will be back next week. But uh, Glenn is going to be here, and he's not going to be here. He's going to be gone for the Penn State game, so Dave is going to be here for three games. And uh, Dave, we love having you, too. It's great to be back, have Dave back in the broadcast booth as Courtney Harp took the handoff and was buried. They're zeroed in on him, Nick. As we said, there's you know he, for, uh, their former teammate. I've been saying it all night. I mean, they've they've held him down. A guy that had 1,139 yards last year, three car or two carries. He's he's negative. So yeah. this is what they wanted to stop. They're, they the Wildcats did not want to see big plays uh, out of the running out of the backfield. So far, so good. And but, yeah, so far, so good. But you know, Harp's the type of runner. He's not going to sit there and take the ball 35 times. But you you know, you fall asleep on one play, he can burn you. He can burn you. Fetter goes to work and loses the football, alertly falls on it at the line of scrimmage. So no damage done other than the loss of down. And Steve, they've got to get all the way down to the 29 yard line. So it's it's third and you know third and, 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 and 19. So that's a tough, you know, tough call. Now again, here's the the advantage you have at midfield. He throws a long bomb, it gets intercepted, it acts as a, as a punt. So you got a lot of leeway as a coach to really run whatever you want when you're at midfield or closer. Yeah, and early on early on here, I come back to that same play to score the touchdown. I got called back. Nearing three minutes to play, first quarter. We are scoreless as Fetter goes with a long count, toss play. Hard around the left side harp with running room hemmed in and belted boy the western wayne wildcats playing some tenacious defense strung out harp on the play yeah, here's what i'm seeing on that play they had it they had the blockers off front but they had no inside out the western wayne just pushed out play out to the boundary he had nowhere else to go. Well, with the toss sweep, exactly. You want your tight end to turn the play inside, to Nick, yeah. and you're right. And they, and they contained it. Now, fourth down, I, I'm thinking he's doing the right thing, punting again. Try to pin him. Field position. You're playing field position, Nick, her, and Steve, early on here in the first quarter. It is fourth down and 11, a punting situation for the North Pocono Trojans. Bryce Hunter on for North Pocono. Two are deep, and uh, let's check this. And... Uh, this punt will bounce at the 18-yard line and rolls back inside the 10. Michael Kowalska, let's check this. Tom Miner, the punter. If, if Western Wayne has any sort of pump block, I'd come after him one time. Yeah, I think you'll see that later in the game. Uh, Here he's fortunate he got the roll on that roll well, down to the five, yes. Not only that, that, that center snap is not exactly the, the fastest thing coming back. It hung a little bit too much in the air, yes. That's something that I know the, the Western Wayne coaches are watching. As Western Wayne will start this drive from their own six-yard line with their backs against the wall, junior quarterback Scott Walk. Set to run the offense. And Walk will go with a handoff. Look like, uh, well, let's wait until they unpile. Tried to go right up the middle, guys, but there was not too much running room there. Kobe Salter, the freshman, 5'5", 150 pounds getting the call. He's going up against some guys 250 pounds, so that's going to be a tough, uh, a tough night. Uh, a freshman. They've got to get off the ball a little better. The, the, you know, the Western Wayne line, got to get off the ball a little better, move them out, create some holes. Second and 11, a loss of one on the last play. Walk will direct some traffic, and he'll come up under center. Walk back in the pocket. Looking, eludes traffic, fires the pass out on the far side of the field, but uh, well not defended. much happening to Brandon Toot. You know, that's his go-to guy. He had 35 cat catches last year, big, strong kid, but again, the, you know, the throwing back across his body, Nick, you see the ball hung a little bit. You know, North Pocono, plenty of time to, to recover and make the play. Under a minute left in the first quarter, and it is scoreless between Western Wayne and North Pocono here in Varden. Great to have you with us for opening night action here on 7. 
Scott Walk will operate out of the shotgun on third down and nine from the Wildcat seven. Walk. Now he's in a little bit of trouble. Turns it upfield. Fires on the run. Pass is picked off. North Poconos. Matt Kelly will take it in for the touchdown. Read it perfectly, Nick. He stepped in front of the receiver. He, he, he read the quarterback and great defensive play for, for North Pocono to go up to go up early. Six nothing, the Trojans. What a great defensive play and a great read by Matt Kelly, the 5'8, 165 pound senior. Now the try for the point after as Bryce Hunter, the junior, will attempt the extra point out of the hold of Luke Fetter. Bit of a high snap, and the kick is perfect. 26 seconds to play, first quarter, as the Trojans take a 7-0 lead over Western Wayne here on Adams Cable High School Football. The White's Crossing Sports Shop, Canaan Street in Carbondale, is the leading authority for the outdoors in northeastern Pennsylvania. They carry a full line of archery accessories, hunting and reloading supplies, live bait, and a variety of fishing tackle. The White's Crossing Sports Shop is open seven days a week from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Call 282-4699 or log on to their website at whitescrossing.com. Finding that unique seasonal outdoor item has never been easier with help from Tom and the staff at the White's Crossing Sports Shop. When your car does this, call us first. Every job is perfect or it doesn't leave the shop. That's the motto at Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale. In an accident, remember, it is your car and your choice to choose your repair center. Call Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale, well known for integrity, safety, and craftsmanship. For more information concerning your rights and the 10 things you need to know before having your car repaired, go to their website, bestinsautobody.com. Good luck to all area teams. From Tony, Mike, Jeff, and the staff at Bestins Auto Body and Collision Center, Gordon Avenue, Carbondale. North Pocono Trojans out to a 7-0 lead over the Western Wayne Wildcats. Here's the kickoff by Tom Miner. Line drive shot caught at the 17-yard line by an upback from Western Wayne. And he uh, plows forward and takes the football out to about the 30-yard line. Now North Pocono is uh, motioning that there was a fumble on the plane, that they had the football, but uh, no word from the official. Brandon Toot, better uh, return that's the better, Nick, I'm, I'm sure you would agree, much better field position for, for Western Wayne. Oh, absolutely. You're, you're just, it's a lot more, a lot less nerve-wracking, and you yeah, make a mistake. Coffee. Right. You can open your playbook a little bit more now, and you know, you're not, you're not being cautious then with your back to the goal. As the Wildcats will talk it over in the huddle. Clock is stopped with 18 seconds here in the first. And the Trojans on top, 7-0. Jake Nagel will lead the Wildcat offense to the line of scrimmage as Scott Walk will approach the line with an eye formation in the backfield. And the handoff will go to the last man through, and he knifes his way to the 42-yard line. Kobe Sauter, the tailback. Has to be a very exciting night for him, only a freshman, and that will bring an end to the first quarter of play here in tonight's season opener between the North Pocono Trojans and the Western Wayne Wildcats with the Trojans on top, 7-0 on Adams Cable High School Football. The Gabriel family and the staff at Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated of Carbondale send best wishes to our local athletes and teams for a successful season. 
In your time of need, call 282-1219 for the ultimate in professional service. From Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale. What does it mean to be an expert? Does it mean getting the job done right? Or being able to pinpoint a problem and quickly find a solution? Whatever the meaning, the team at NJS are your experts in hydraulic and pneumatic components. So whether you need a custom hose built on the spot or a cylinder repaired from the ground up, the experts at NJS are there when you need them. And with the area's largest hose and fittings warehouse, NJS has thousands of the parts you need in stock and ready to go. NJS. Route 6 Mayfield, online at NJSCO.com. NJS is proud to call this area home and proud to sponsor our area athletes on Adams Cable Channel 7. Welcome back to Varden with Dave Sarah and Nick Homick. Steve Young here, 7-0 North Pocono as we kick off quarter number two here in Varden with the Western Wayne Wildcats in possession of the football facing second down and four from their own 42. Here is walk on a late handoff and uh, boy trying to run up the middle against this uh, North Pocono defense has been difficult thus far, thus far in the football game. Still might have got I don't know Steve if he got some positive yardage 31 for North Pocono shot the gap there rather nicely slowed up the play. Um, Ben Dial, the strong safety, who really the strong safety functions more like a linebacker in, in most cases, especially against the run. So that was a nice play to slow it up, holding it to a one-yard gain. Third and short, though, for Western Wing. Third down and three, the Wildcats. Dylan Walk, the freshman, on the bottom of your screen as Scott Walk will be under pressure, eludes a tackler, drops, dumps off the pass to Dakota Sawyer at the 46. And then a host of white shirts come in to uh, shut him down. Tim Blaine, the free safety, in on the tackle for the North Pocono defense. It'll be close. It's a favorable spot, and I think they just uh, motion it as a first down. So that will sustain the drive for the Wildcats. Boy, what a great crowd we have here tonight, guys. Coach McDonough predicted it. Wow. Well, you've got a nice night. Perfect weather, opening night. Two good football teams going at it here in week number one. Seven nothing Trojans, first down and 10 for the Wildcats. Walk on a handoff to the tailback. And there he goes, Kobe Sauter inside the 45. Good job defensively by the North Pocono Trojans to finally stop him. Well, they got something working here. Another first down, second in, uh, second in a row, second of the game. I think it's only second down. I think they're getting a little uh, ahead of themselves. Yeah, a little bit the, short. I think, bit uh, short. Yeah, I think uh, the scoreboard is off the mark. Second down and short for uh, the Wildcats at their own 44. Still a good game. Dylan Walk on the top of your screen. And once again, they will go to Salter, the freshman, but uh, forward progress, Steve, I think. Stopped cold at the line of scrimmage. Matt Slagas with a very nice tackle there. Looks like too short to measure. Wildcats will face third down as they talk it over in the huddle. You do have an update on that Cardindale game, right, Dave? Chargers are up 7-6 down to Hanover first quarter, minute 43 to go. So Hanover, who beat Cardindale pretty good last year, if I recall, the Chargers right in there in the first quarter. Third down and a long yard for the Western Wayne Wildcats. And Walk will go on a quarterback keeper, and he's got the first down. And no question about that one. Well, Jake, give credit to Jake Nagel, Jim Stein, and uh, Mason Havenstreit. Those three guys up the middle uh, did the work for quarterback Scott Walk to pick up that first down. Well, they're 235, 250, and 235, so clearly he's uh, got some good protection behind those three guys, and it worked. He got you know, more than what he needed there, and that's a good sign. They seem to be running up the middle with a little bit of success now on this drive. First down and 10, the Wildcats on the move from the North Pocono, 41. Here's Walk on a procedure. He was going to go on a uh, rollout, but uh, the flag and the whistle 
Flag came out, whistle blew, and be a five-yard illegal procedure. Fifth of the game, and again, as we said, this is going to happen, but at least, at least they're not deep in their own territory. The fast-moving game. I mean, we had a little sure roll is. there in the second quarter, but or, sorry, in the first quarter, but really picked up. Yeah, right now it's moving along at a rapid pace. It's not even 7:30 yet. You're kidding? No. Wow, that's great. I never kid, Steve. That is good. <laughs> maybe, Nick. Maybe I'll be on the couch by 9:15 <laughs> tonight. <laughs> uh, I wish I could be. <laughs> you know what happens when we say that? We don't leave yep. here till 10:15. <laughs> First down and 15, by the way, as Walk will drop back. Another flag. Rolling out with a flag on the play, throw and he will just throw, throw it away. away. Smart, move. Smart play there. Yeah, don't take the hit for no reason. Well, Steve, you see, if the Zebras can keep the Hankies in the pocket, you might be helped by 9 -15. See, every time we talk about the fast-moving game, it's almost like an omen. It always happens, Nick. <laughs> and he's got to get all the way to the 30. Western Wayne has to get to the 31-yard line, so... 7-0 North Pocono. I'm going to be a first and 20. And Again, Nick, as I said, I liked, I love this kid's arm. He he has some strength there, and I see he's talking to Coach McDonough again. I, I think he's got to put it up a little bit, and, and you can do that knowing that, you know, he's got some confidence. This is, You know, it's a second-year starter now, and he's, you know, he could be throwing to his brother. He lost a, a great receiver last year in the, in the Haynes kid, and... Uh, who's now playing in college, so he's got to get another receiver, another go-to guy. Yeah, he's got to break somebody in pretty quickly. I mean, Or you look for two over the middle, a good, solid, you know, 225-pound target. Yep. At six foot two. You know, and the thing I like about what Western Wayne does with Walk is, you know, they don't keep him sitting back there like a sitting duck. They move him around, they run him left, they run him right. Second and 15, and the running game for the Western Wayne Wildcats. Look like uh, Kobe Sauter again on the carry. Going right up the middle. Carried the football inside the 45 of North Pocono. And there's Matt Slagas again, Steve, 6'2", 275 in the junior. He's all over the he's all over tonight playing, having a very nice game. And Matt Slagas is a heck of an athlete. I don't know if you keep up on any track and field, but he's a heck the whole fam the whole Slagas family is just known for their discus throwing. Uh, I mean, they, they go to these national competitions all over all over the United States, and I mean, they, they really bring home some nice hardware. Third down and 13 for the Wildcats. Walk to throw, ball is Dangerous. batted away. Lucky to get it back, lucky to get that back. Tipped up in the air, tip drill, you never know. So actually, Western Wayne's fortunate it fell incomplete, Steve. Tom Miner tipped the football for the North Pocono Trojans, and uh, that will bring up fourth and 13, and the punting unit will come on for the Wildcats. Now the same, the, the rules are reversed. Now Western Wayne has to pin them deep, same side of the field. This is where your special teams can get you, get you back in business. You need a good, uh, good punt, but good punt coverage here. There's really no wind at all right now, so. We got it, we got it. And they just get that punt away and this will be Miner on the return. Miner hemmed in, and he breaks the, breaks tackle. the tackle. Well, let's check oh, it. Oh. That is Kelly on the return. He's and the Kelly man of the night, Steve. The way. There he goes. Touchdown. No flags either. Wow, unbelievable. Matt Kelly, the senior. It looked as though he was hemmed in near the 25-yard line. It, I thought uh, Western Wayne had him, but... 85-yard uh, return, Steve. And again, you know, missed tackles have cost Western Wayne here, and... You see the result. And it's 13-0 North Pocono. Well, when your offense isn't doing nothing, it helps to have a special teams and a defensive touchdown. Boy, that was pretty. And no flags on the play. He's got good presence. You could see how, you know, Matt Kelly with the thing, is great eyes, great lateral movement, and he's awfully quick. Bryce Hunter is on to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Luke Fetter. Good snap and, uh, wow, bad kick. 7-13 left in the first half, and it's 13-0 North Pocono on Adams Cable High School Football. 
The Waymart Building Center carries quality materials for every job, including new home construction, remodeling, or that simple weekend project. The Waymart Building Center will supply everything to make your job easy, including plumbing and electrical supplies, hardware, tools, and paint. Remember, you don't have to drive far to find building or remodeling supplies. Stop by and see Chuck at your hometown building center, the Waymart Building Center. Enjoy the feel of deep, rich luxury. Get the drama of radiant color and experience the timeless beauty, comfort, and durability of carpeting from Tom's Floor Shop and Childs. Tom's Floor Shop offers a large selection of hardwood, laminate, vinyl, ceramic tile, and carpeting on display in their showroom. Rely on Tom's Floor Shop for expert installation. All roads lead to where great floors begin at Tom's Floor Shop. Exit 6 off the Casey Highway in Childs. Welcome back to the Sharky Rosetti Sports Complex here in Varden with Dave Sarah and Nick Homick. Steve Young here with you on opening night where the Trojans of North Pocono have jumped out to a 13 to nothing lead over the Western Wayne Wildcats. Now Tom Miner will tee up the football and kick off to Western Wayne. Now, Steve, if you're Western Wayne, you want to put a drive together. You don't want to give them the ball back. Uh, you, you, don't, you, want, you want positive momentum going into the half. So this is a very important drive for Western Wayne right here. You don't want the game to get away. Here's Miner's kick. And end over end kick caught at the 18-yard uh, line. And on the return for North Pocono. Wait until... Uh, Thought his knee nick might have been down. Yeah, I'm I surprised think they didn't blow that dead. I mean, Kenny French, a, a senior, on the return for the North Pocono Trojans, and North Pocono will go to work right now as the officials will spot the football near the 27-yard line. And North Pocono will go to work first down and 10. Well, their defense, Steve. I tell you, North Pocono's defense showing showing us a lot tonight. So you know, Western Wayne here, we're cut out. Hell, all of these uh, players, probably 9 out of 11 you see out there on the field, uh, they've been playing for a couple of years now, and uh, it's paying dividends as Scott Walk will roll out, and boy, the heat is on, and Walk attempts to turn it upfield at the 23, and he was run out of bounds. Just a great defensive effort by the North Pocono Trojans. He was looking for Dakota Sawyer, Steve, and he was covered, and he did the right thing. He tucked it, went down, rather than you know, rather than make a mistake. You take the loss of four on that one, regroup next play. Well, it was Brett Butler, only a sophomore, leading the way with the defensive pressure for North Pocono. First down, and uh, let's check this second down in 13. And the football is on the 24-yard line. Yeah, wind has kicked up a little bit here in the booth. As North Pocono defensively will try to shut down this uh, running attempt by Western Wayne, and they do. Yeah, North Pocono across that line. They've uh, Slegas at 275, Priswara 250. And their linebackers have some size as Tyler Musgrave, a good two-way player for North Pocono. At that middle linebacker spot, he's 205 pounds and six foot one. Third down and long for Western Wayne as they break the huddle. Kilgallen is wide at the bottom of your screen as Quarterback Scott Walk will drop back. A little pump fake in some trouble now. Turns it upfield. Nice move. And then is belted near the 27-yard line. Well, he was he was he was looking for his mate. He was looking for number 15, Steve. He was looking for uh, his uh, for Cameron Kilgallen. He was covered by Courtney Harp, so we tucked it in and took a hit, but held on to it. No well, Western Wayne unable to generate any kind of offense and. Uh, Punting unit will come on. Josh Stevens will boot it away for Western Wayne. Good snap. Boy, this punt has a lot of hang time on it. Fair, Fair catch. catch is called for by Matt Kelly. 
And North Pocono will have excellent field position as they start this drive from their own 43. Boy, Nick Stevens can really get oh, that ball does, up in the jet the stream. Time, I'll tell you. And it allows them to get down there and, and cover it, so there was no return there. Even, Save some yardage. You know, even on the, on the on the punt return for a touchdown, they covered it well. They just didn't yeah. tackle it. Yeah. They didn't finish the play. You know, Western Wayne just has to get so, something going on offense. You know, some positives. Yes. You know, I, I think they'll be okay. Their defense is, just, you, know, you know, keeping them in the game. But offensively, they just have no rhythm right now. Not yet. First down and 10, North Pocono. Here's Fetter off the play fake. And the southpaw dumps it off. And the uh, pass is complete. And for North Pocono, Ben Dial on the receiving end. And that's good for a Trojan first down into Wildcat territory. Now North Pocono can come at you a couple of different ways with the running attack and uh, Luke Fetter throwing the football. And they've got something going here with a 13-point lead and excellent field position at the Wildcat 34. Yeah, so, so far, I mean, Polk, North Pocono doesn't really, like, do any kind of spreading you out or, you know, any kind of wacky offensive like you're seeing all over the place now. Seems like they just get forward. it done, you know. But sometimes simple is better, too. Fetter on a handoff. Courtney Harp bottled up after a short gain on the play. Time not a factor, four minutes, still plenty of time, no need to hurry, you can run it in, take their time. Need a stop here if you're Western Wayne at home, you don't you don't want to go, go in 20 nothing, 21 nothing. Nick, it's really unusual to have a game moving along at this pace on opening night, because usually you have a lot of penal penalties, players cramping up, you know, a lot of play stoppage, but uh, here in the first half of this game, it's moved right along. Yeah, I mean, you know, the cramping issue hopefully doesn't happen at all tonight, but, you know, it's the first game it just seems to always happen. Second and nine, Musgrave on a handoff, and Musgrave move, advances the football to the 31 and then was uh, stopped on the play by Billy Pauley, the strong side linebacker of that uh, Western Wayne defense. Jake Nagel again in on the tackle, having a very nice night defensively himself. Uh, third down and third and six, Nick. Again, if you're, you know, uh, you know, you know, Luke Fetter's shown a nice touch tonight, so you got to defend both tonight, uh, the run and the pass. So North Pocono offensively, has got a lot of options here on this play. Yeah, I know you're in a short field too. I, I think you, this is two down territory here. Third and six for the Trojans. Senior quarterback, Luke Fetter. Long count, Offside. and there's the penalty. Well, that helps if you're a Pocono fan. Looks like Nagel, a little bit too jumpy on that one. Came across the line of scrimmage too quickly. Hang on, maybe. Uh, I think he was it drawn off, Steve. It goes, by, it goes against North Pocono, so uh, excuse me. And uh, five-yarder will place the football at the 36-yard line. The zebra saw something we all didn't. You know, Jake showed good discipline on that. He saw the guy jump, and he, you know, so he he did what he was supposed to do. Third and long. Tim Blaine is a wideout on the top of your screen. Fetter with an eye formation in the backfield on third down and 12. Fetter to throw, airs it out. Incomplete. You take a shot. Sure. This, 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 you know, you take the shot deep. This guy wasn't open. Good coverage. Western Wayne read it right. Falls incomplete. Well, you're up by 13. Good field position. Take a shot at the end zone. Fourth and 12 now for the Trojans. Great crowd on hand here in Barden. That's probably the case all around northeastern Pennsylvania this evening. And we have a timeout on the field. 239 left in the first half. It's North Pocono leading Western Wayne 13 to nothing on Adams Cable High School Football.
The Waymart Deli is a proud supporter of Western Wayne Wildcat football. Call 488-5790 and place your order from the many taste-tempting selections the Waymart Deli menu has to offer. Like their delicious breakfast sandwiches, dinner baskets, specialty wraps, tasty deli salads, and of course, the famous Waymart Deli fresh hot and cold subs. From your friends at the Waymart Deli, good luck Western Wayne Wildcats. A big thanks to the Waymart Deli, a proud sponsor here tonight on Adams Cable High School Football. Dennis and the staff, oh, if, if you want a great hoagie, Nick, you have to stop into the Waymart Deli. They are fantastic, and they have a great menu. So uh, check it out while you're uh, running around this weekend, maybe out in the car and you're in the Waymart area right there at the Four Corners. Stop at the Waymart Deli. You won't be disappointed. You will love it. 2.39 remaining here in the first half, and the North Pocono Trojans lead the Wildcats 13 to nothing. And uh, after the timeout, here come the Trojans back out onto the football field with a fourth down and 12. A little bit surprised they're going for it here. He's probably figuring, Nick, if you punt, you're not going to get it back. So my guess is he feels his defense is playing good enough uh, he feels he can hold them, so I mean I, that's the only thing I could think here. Fourth and twelve, and North Pocono will go for it. Fetter with a high snap, plenty of time, airing it out, looking long, and the pass is complete for the touchdown. Tom Miner on the receiving end for North Pocono, and on fourth and long. They hit pay dirt. That's why we're sitting up here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, How about that? They, <laughs> he was interfered with, too, and he stuck, you know, good concentration, great catch. Single coverage over there, good coverage by the defender, just one of those things. He's throwing a nice ball tonight. I said at the top, Luke Fetter's throwing. Uh, Coach Dolan was excited. He's back a, you know, a year, year of experience. He threw a very nice spiral there, Steve, about 35 yards for the touchdown. That was beautiful. And it's 19 to nothing, North Pocono. You know, sometimes, guys, you have to uh, roll the dice. And that time it paid dividends. And now the Trojans will go for two. And a new quarterback in there now, Donnie Blaine running the offense, and they'll go with a handoff, and Courtney Harp scores the two-point conversion. And with two minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the half, it's North Pocono leading Western Wayne 21 to nothing on Adams Cable High School Football. Here's great news from Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale that can save you money and make shopping for your prescriptions more convenient. Figlamini now has an 895 generic drug plan and free local delivery. Figlamini offers diabetic shoes, lift chairs, and home health supplies. That's what sets Figlamini apart from the chains. Locally owned and trusted since 1929. Stop in and see the difference for yourself at Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, where your you're not just a number, your family. Back to the gridiron for more Adams Cable High School football. Two minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the first half, and it is North Pocono on top of Western Wayne, 21 to nothing here on opening night. North Pocono Trojans gambled on fourth down and it paid off. Two point conversion was good by Courtney Harp and now the Trojans will tee it up and kick off to Western, uh, the Western Wayne Wildcats. See Tom Miner 6'3", a little bit of an advantage and you can see he pulled it down nicely but again the throw was, was perfect and led him nicely and big fourth down conversion. Here's the kick by Miner. This time a line drive shot caught at the 20 yard line. And right up the middle. Looked like Brandon Toot once again on the return. Let's wait for them to unpile. Yep, to it. And it was six He's, foot two and 225 pounds. They got to look for him now a little bit, Nick. I, I think you would agree. Got to, you know, he might be one of the most decorated defensive players in, in the history of your school, but he's got good hands. I think you got to look to, you know, some of your, your star performers and 
See if you can get the ball in his hands, see what he could do. I agree. You look for your veteran leadership, too. And to it certainly is that, like you said, 35 catches last year. You've got to utilize him at some point here. Wildcats go to work with a first down at their own 36-yard line. Walk, looking near side. Pass is complete to Toot. Toot exactly. breaks a tackle and uh, picks up about a yard or two before he's run out of bounds in front of the Wildcat bench. And again, as we just said, get him involved and, and see what he can do. He dodged the tackle there. Good coverage. Again, uh, Nick, I know you're very impressed with this North Pocono defense tonight. Oh, they fly around. I mean, they're getting good penetration, so Walk can't set up. And, you know, he's going through his progressions. I mean, Tuit was probably his third option on that. Jake Nagel will lead the Wildcats to the line of scrimmage on second and eight from the Wildcat 38. Scott Walk, who led Division II in passing last year, will drop back and on a delay, hands it off and Sauter, the ball carrier, out across the 40. We have two minutes left to play in the first half here in Varden. Great to have you with us here on opening night on Adams Cable High School football. Just a perfect night. It's cooled off nicely. Slight breeze. I smell rain out here. <laughs> Don't say that, I, Nick. I really do. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's not good. I, He's up top, Steve. He knows. Yeah. Luke Fetter on the tackle. They're doing it all tonight, Luke. Quarterback making a nice play out of the secondary. Third down and five for the Wildcats. And this time, Walk will... Work out of the shotgun, and Scott Walk uh, underthrows his intended receiver. So with a minute 23 to play, fourth down and long, and the punting unit will come on for the Western Wayne Wildcats, and Matt Kelly will await the kick from the Wildcats. Yeah, you take a look at the flag right now. Not too much uh, wind at, in that area, but here near the boot, the wind has kicked up slightly. This kick will be a wobbly one. It will bounce at the 30. Did it hit a player? No. Looked like football. it hit a North Pocono player, but it didn't. They're not saying that. Could have been a break for Western Wayne, but all right, good punt. No return. Good job by the Wildcats. As Stevens got the punt away. And North Pocono will... Take over possession of the football, first down and 10 from its own 30 yard line, leading 21 to nothing here on opening night. Try to have some uh, updates for you. We did have an update on the Carbondale game. They were leading, and that was uh, early in the first quarter. Let's see if I can get you some stuff here. And probably what you'll see here, North Pole, I don't think you'll, you might see him run the ball. I might pop it with Harp. I don't think you're going to see anything too elaborate. You don't want to risk a pick for a touchdown. You, you'll, you'll take a 21 nothing lead going into the half, Steve. First down and 10, the Trojans from their own 30. Fetter will set them down with a long count, and he will hand it off. And the handoff will go to Kelly for a gain of about five on the play. Now, Dave, Nick is uh, tech savvy now. Is he? Yeah. yeah. Hey, you want a couple updates? I got him for He's, He upgraded his phone, and l listen to this. Nick is the guy giving the updates now. Go ahead, Nick. All right, Lakeland's up 14-0 with 7.30 to go in the second quarter. And we have Juan Paul Pack up 21-0 after one. Wow. Montrose, who we'll see next week against Carbondale, losing at the end of one to Myers, 13-3. Abington Heights and Pittston area still tied, so they got a big defensive struggle going down there. How about that Dunmore game? Dunmore was, I just had one here. Well, I have Dallas and Scranton tied at seven. Scranton prep is up six nothing at the end of one. Wow, Mid Valley and Valley View also in action tonight. That's a big rivalry. Oh, I just had something here from this. So how about that? Nick gets the. Uh, he get, Nick. That was your wife's phone. Is that correct? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> she gets the new one, and I get the rejects. That's how I get my cars. <laughs> I never get a new car. Well, now I do. Now this year I did. Finally. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll get my wife's phone and get rid of this 9.99 thing that, you know. <laughs> 
still have uh, <laughs> it's like the first stones when a bird flies <laughs> out. <laughs> Second and four from the uh, 35 yard line for the Trojans. Yeah. Flags come out on the play. Western New England right now just needs to settle down and be cool. You know, you get that into hurts. Half time, you, first of all, you've got to get into halftime with 21 nothing. You can't give up another score. But you got to just put the first half behind you and come out and play a good, a good second. Because really, I mean, Pocono, you know, three the one big, big play on off, right? The one big one play, big on, play off on, each, and, yeah. on each end. Yeah. But they have taken advantage of uh, opportunities. A lot of miscues. Six, seven penalties for Western Wayne didn't help. No, they they, they have to be approaching 50 yards in penalties a lot. Yep. With the penalty, it's a first down for North Pocono. And on a draw play, here comes Courtney Harp around the near side. Cut down at the 46-yard line after a nice run. It defended well. Billy Polly, the safety, he six came foot and nice. 240 pounds, made the tackle. Nice open field tackle, rode him down, kept the, uh, that should be it, Steve, for the half. I don't know if they'll run a play. And Harp is uh, limping off the field here. So yeah. he's down about midfield. So that will stop the clock with 36 seconds okay. I, uh, remaining in the first half. Hope I'm wrong. I hope this is just a cramp, but. Well, he will be attended to. Let's hope it's a cramp. And next week we will be in the Pioneer City for high school football in week number two when Montrose will take on Carbondale. And they Harp is back up on his feet. Uh, yeah, he's grabbing out a calf. Um, I would assume that it's just a cramp. It's a little bit humid today. A little bit. <laughs> this uh, very unseasonable. Well, I think this humidity is going to move out late tonight, early tomorrow, and we should have a great weekend. They're saying it's going to be a wonderful weekend, but it's still going to be hot. Hey, I'll take it, Nick. As long as I don't have to shovel it, I'm happy. <laughs> well, that's coming, Steve. Nick, you think he throws deep for one or just go to a knee and go into the half? What do you think he does here? Second and five? Second down and five. I don't know, I was wrong before, so I say he throws it deep. <laughs> 24 seconds to play in the half. Second and five, handoff. We'll go to Kelly, breaking tackles, and Kelly, boy, once he gets going with the football, possesses great speed. And uh, Don McDonough made the stop for Western Wayne on the sideline. <laughs> better put him in the stat sheet. <laughs> Yeah, how about uh, congratulations to Don McDonough on the birth of his son, six months old, and uh, had a chance to talk to uh, Don McDonough before going on the air. He was up here in the booth earlier, and uh, very busy schedule, but always looks forward to getting home with his family, and that's one of the most important parts of being a head coach. Pass downfield, batted away. Good defensive play by Western Wayne as North Pocono went with a new quarterback. Larry Napolitano. Then wearing number eight. And with uh, 10 seconds left, North Pocono will have another opportunity to uh, try for the end zone, leading 21 to nothing. Well, the fans making their way down to the concession area. Great, great menu down there. They have the grill fired up here tonight. Hot dogs, hamburgers, pizza, you name it, they have it here. With Joe Romanowski running that stand, expect anything less, Steve. The guy's... Uh... Here's another pass, and uh, nobody out there for North Pocono. Western Wayne will just let it fall with five seconds to play. 
Joe, the former head football coach here years ago, good baseball man in his own right. And, mm-hmm. and if you look at Donnie McDonough's staff, he's got you know Tim Hess, who was formerly a head coach here. Uh, coach Baker goes way back with Coach Keller with the Lackawanna County and Scranton Eagles. He's he, played, assemb- he played for the yeah, uh, he, Eagles he's, also. He's, quarter- he's coached some great quarterbacks, the short kid from Del Val, Crakey from Lakeland. So, you know, he's he's going to be, he's a great addition to this staff this year. And, uh, you know, they're looking for a nice season. They got to just get, got to regroup, as Nick said, for the second half. Lots of game left, lots of game. And once again, North Pocono on third down and 10. Napolitano will hand it off, and they'll just keep it on the ground to bring an end to the first half of today's game between the Western Wayne Wildcats and the North Pocono Trojans as the Trojans will head to the locker room with a 21 to nothing advantage here at halftime. The Gabriel family and the staff at Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated of Carbondale send best wishes to our local athletes and teams for a successful season. In your time of need, call 282-1219 for the ultimate in professional service from Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale. The Waymart Deli is a proud supporter of Western Wayne Wildcat football. Call 488-5790 and place your order from the many taste-tempting selections the Waymart Deli menu has to offer. Like their delicious breakfast sandwiches, dinner baskets, specialty wraps, tasty deli salads, and of course, the famous Waymart Deli fresh hot and cold subs. From your friends at the Waymart Deli, good luck Western Wayne Wildcats. The Waymart Building Center carries quality materials for every job, including new home construction, remodeling, or that simple weekend project. The Waymart Building Center will supply everything to make your job easy, including plumbing and electrical supplies, hardware, tools, and paint. Remember, you don't have to drive far to find building or remodeling supplies. Stop by and see Chuck at your hometown building center, the Waymart Building Center. Here's great news from Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale that can save you money and make shopping for your prescriptions more convenient. Figlamini now has an 895 generic drug plan and free local delivery. Figlamini offers diabetic shoes, lift chairs, and home health supplies. That's what sets Figlamini apart from the chains. Locally owned and trusted since 1929. Stop in and see the difference for yourself at Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, where your you're not just a number, your family. The Gabriel family and the staff at Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated of Carbondale send best wishes to our local athletes and teams for a successful season. In your time of need, call 282-1219 for the ultimate in professional service from Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale. When your car does this. Call us first. Every job is perfect or it doesn't leave the shop. That's the motto at Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale. In an accident, remember, it is your car and your choice to choose your repair center. Call Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale, well known for integrity, safety, and craftsmanship. For more information concerning your rights and the 10 things you need to know before having your car repaired, go to their website, bestinsautobody.com. Good luck to all area teams. From Tony, Mike, Jeff, and the staff at Bestins Auto Body and Collision Center, Gordon Avenue, Carbondale. Enjoy the feel of deep, rich luxury. Get the drama of radiant color and experience the timeless beauty, comfort, and durability of carpeting from Tom's Floor Shop and Childs. Tom's Floor Shop offers a large selection of hardwood, laminate, vinyl, ceramic tile, and carpeting on display in their showroom. Rely on Tom's Floor Shop for expert installation. All roads lead to where great floors begin at Tom's Floor Shop. Exit 6 off the Casey Highway in Childs. Clearly, you know, you, there's a little bit of urgency, but again, you cannot panic. you got to keep running your offense, grinding it out. you got to get some positive first downs, get some momentum, and go from there. 
you don't you can't get it all back on one play Steve is the point and, and you know and coach McDonough knows that and and on the other side Greg Dolan very very happy and pleased with his first half he's telling his guys four quarters you got to play now here's the kickoff Tom Miner's kick is a sidewinder and it goes out of bounds in front of the uh, North Pocono bench near the 38 yard line You know, sometimes you hit them good, and sometimes you shank one, and that's just, what happened. Just like golf, right there. Yeah. Well, we've all done that. <laughs> now, in, in college, Nick, it would go to the 35. What do they do in high school? Same thing, I 35, believe. 35, they used to be, I don't know if the rules changed rules. in your years, but you used to have the option to re-kick it or okay. take it up to 35. We'd have to check that with, of course, uh, Jeff, Ar Jeff Arthur, Mike Sarah, two of the, uh, two of the, I don't, they're not here tonight, but two of the finer officials in the area. A lot of times we used to want them to re-kick it because if you had a good kick return, you want right. to get better field position anyway. Plus, they would back it up five yards. Looks like the spot is the 36-yard line. That's where the Wildcats will go to work with the football first down and 10. Kilgallen is a wide out on the near side. As Walk will work out of the shotgun, and he will find nice Kilgallen with it. Beautiful reception, and Kilgallen has a first down at the 49-yard line. Dave, just like you talked about in the, at halftime, with yes. the shotgun, you come right out in it, finds Kilgallen right off the bat. He was open. He was cutting back to the middle. Good throw, and and you know he again he's got he's got some arm strength, Nick, and and that helps. You know when you you're thrown into a little the breeze seems like Nick Steve it's blowing towards us, but. He's got a chance. He's got a very, very good arm. A little bit more time to throw the football working out of the shotgun. And he can see where his receivers are, you know, who's breaking open, who's not. First down and 10, the football just shy of midfield. They will hand it off, and this time it, running play is shut down by North Pocono. And, you know, that's the other thing, too. If you think you're going to see him in shotgun, just throwing the ball the rest of the half. Right. You know, think again. you got to keep the defense honest. Otherwise, they're just going to start, you know, pinning their ears back and coming after a walk. Dakota Swoyer checking into the football game. On second down and 10 for the Wildcats. One minute gone by here in the third as the Cats trail 21 to nothing. Jake Nagel leading Western Wayne to the line of scrimmage. Got a hurry, Steve. He's down to 2 1 on the clock. He's and he just off. gets the snap in time and rolls out, fires a pass downfield, and it's ah. intercepted. Picked off by North Pocono. Tim Blaine, I believe, picked it off the free safety. Blaine picks it off for North Pocono and. Uh, they shut down Western Wayne as Walk throws the interception and the Trojans will have possession of the football as it is spotted at the 35, their own 35. So that's tough break for the yes. Western Wayne Wildcats. They were hoping to uh, move the football a little more effectively, possibly running out of the shotgun, but... Uh, Just a good defensive play. North Pocono comes up with the big play, and now they will go on the offensive attack as Harp is hemmed in, and the Wildcats hold a team meeting on him at the 30. Good job by the Western Wayne defensive unit. Dakota Sawyer. Yeah, there is a host of uh, Wildcats in on that tackle. Loss of one on the play will result in second down and 11. You're just tuning in. It's North Pocono 21, Western Wayne nothing. Two minutes gone by here in third quarter action. Fetter will survey the Wildcat defense. Fetter with a long count. Let's check it. New quarterback in there, and uh, this pass is complete to Musgrave as we have a new quarterback in. Donnie Blaine running the offense for North Pocono, wearing number 12. Flag way back here yeah. at the 40, thrown real late, too. Personal foul. Uh, North Pocono. Coming back. Third quarterback, North Pocono's used tonight. A personal foul on Western Wayne. Oh, he's reversing himself, the official. Well, guys, Donnie Blaine is a freshman, 5'11", 170. 
running the offense right now for North Pocono. Is that 15 from the end of the play? Wow. I don't know what they saw, but I didn't see anything. Now with that penalty, North Pocono is in excellent field position and a big opportunity with a first down at the Wildcat 26. Blaine running the offense for North Pocono looks to throw, airing it out and overthrows his intended receiver, Tim Blaine. He's got a can in this kid. Yeah, he just flicked that Nick 35 <laughs> yards. Wow. Nice tight spiral too. Throws a live ball. Well, Donnie Blaine, a uh, freshman, Tim Blaine, a senior. Made it look easy, too, when he fired that pass. Well, if you're Western Wayne, obviously, you know, Steve, you need to stop here. You, you can't, you know, you can't afford to give up another one here. The incompletion stops the clock with nine minutes and 28 seconds to play third quarter. Great to have you on board here tonight in Varden for high school football. Second and 10, North Pocono. Donnie Blaine on the handoff, and this running play goes nowhere. There's Brandon Toot. Brandon Toot shot the gap that time and uh, shut the ground game down. Good job defensively by the Wildcats. He didn't have 114 tackles, 82 solo last year for nothing, Steve. That's the big play, so, that, so they need a big play on defense, and uh, he may have started it there. Now you got a third and long, you hold him here on fourth down, get the ball back. And, and no penalties either. It seems like every time yeah. they've had North Pocono in a third and long, something happens with a penalty or... Plane up under center. Lane showing a lot of poise as he drops back in the pocket, dumps it off, and the pass is incomplete. Good coverage. Also, Wayne really read that screen. Off the fingertips of Kelly. And it's fourth down now for the North Pocono Trojans. See, what Coach Dolan was trying to do there, Steve, I think, get seven. He want to get it all back at once, get seven or eight, make it a manageable fourth down. And he's still going to go for it, obviously. On fourth and about a 14 yards to go. North Pocono will gamble here on fourth down. They'll go for it. With a comfortable lead. And it's Blaine out of the shotgun. Firing downfield. Here's the pass. And it's, oh, it's dropped in the end zone. That was an easy six. And it falls incomplete. Well, you know he can make the tough catch. He certainly did that in the first half. Tom Miner, yes. But he got open. He got behind the defense. So if you're, you know, you're. How about Donnie Blaine? The way he throws the football. He just, like Nick brought it up. Like he just flicks the football. And there it goes. He like easily 30 yards. I wonder, did Luke Fetter get hurt? I, w I was wondering. Well, the incomplete pass will give the Wildcats the football on downs. First down and 10. If Fetter wasn't in there at the end of the first half. I'm wondering either. if something, if he was throwing it nice too. This is, this is a key drive here, Nick, as we've been saying all night, especially in the second half. Walk, little swing pass. Hill Gallon, nowhere to go. Probably going to lose yards, Steve. You know, those are nice early in the game, those little right. quick screens and things like that. But with, with North Pocono being as aggressive on defense, you know, Western Wayne, really needs to, you know, start getting the ball on the field. Right, a little more vertical, maybe. They, and they've had success, you know, a couple times getting down the field, too. Second down and 16 now for the Western Wayne Wildcats from their own 23. And Scott Walk will work out of the shotgun formation. Low snap, walk with time. Screener. Steps up, fires the pass. Oh, incomplete. Now, well, right now, Western Wayne just continues to struggle offensively. Off the hands of Joe Tomasetti. Just off the fingertips. Again, he's under pressure a little bit. See, so he needs a little bit more time to throw. 
Uh, he stepped up nice in the pocket. It's just, again, the pass rush of the Trojans, Steve, has been pretty darn good all night. And That's it's, been the name of the game, yeah. Yeah, when you're under pressure as a quarterback, you know, even if you're Tom Brady, you're going to have a hard time. Third down and long as the Wildcats come up to the line of scrimmage. And Scott Walk, the junior quarterback. Heat is on once again, and the pass was tipped. Flag on the play. Well, somebody got a hand on it. Might have been uh, Matt Slagus. So now. I think I thought I saw hold it, yeah. Holding, Steve. That'll be declined, of course. Fourth down. Fourth down for the Wildcats, and the punting unit will come on for Western Wayne. Well, you need Josh Stevens to bail you out here. You need you need him to, you know, he's been a weapon tonight with the punts, and he needs, you know, they need it one more time to get out of the hole. Yeah, and you got to cover. You got to cover it, of course. Now Stevens hoping for a good snap. Boy, he could really get a lot of hang time on that football when he boots it away. Now the officials trying to uh, get things organized on the uh, line of scrimmage. And with 7.33 to play third quarter and North Pocono leading 21 to nothing. Matt Kelly will await the punt. Good snap. Good kick. Yep. Gets a Western Wayne roll and keeps on rolling inside the 30. Good Four, job by the Wildcats. 47 yard punt, Steve. That was what they needed. A good punt by Stevens. And North Pocono will take over at their own 29 with the football and a 21 to nothing lead. Well, opening night. Fans having a great time. Dave, take a look to your right down in the uh, stands. See that little guy there wearing number 63 and a Jets helmet? Isn't that cute? The J-E-T-S. Yes. Jets, Jets, Jets. Everybody having a good time here on opening night at the, at the uh, Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex. That's a future player right there, Dave, when you come dressed for the event. Nice to see that, obviously. Sure is. First down and 10, North Pocono going to work. And Fetter back in the ball game, dumps off the pass. It's complete. Ben Dial for North Pocono. And a huge game. Just got a tweet here. Is ever covering the Carbondale game for the paper? 30-yard 30, 30 gain, Steve. Feels like the Carbondale area offense has been on the field all night. <laughs> They're still up 15 to 6. <laughs> Well, so they need two scores to beat them, so if you're up nine, you need two scores if you're Hanover to come back, so you got to like where you're at right now if you're Carbonell. Absolutely. And guys, Fetter back in the ball game, so obviously... He was uh, out there on defense. Right, so. so obviously he's okay. First down and 10, North Pocono. Fetter on a give. Courtney Harp spinning and then gang tackled. His forward progress will be marked near the 43-yard line. Well, now if you're but, uh, you know, guys, one point I'd like to bring up, Western Wayne really does miss Courtney Harp, no doubt about it. Yeah, that's a large part of your offense. That's awfully tough. And, again, there, you know, there was there were some newspaper articles covering that transfer, and uh, PIAA or District 2 ruled it okay. And, and now if you're North Pocono, you simply just try to chew, chew clock here. You know, you got a good running back, and you don't want fumbles and you don't want penalties. Just chew, run the clock. It's all about clock management. Second down and seven for the Trojans. As they go with the ground game again. And Western Wayne is all over it. Kelly getting the call for the Trojans. Third down coming up for North Pocono as we near six minutes left in the third quarter of play. As Don McDonough paces the sidelines, looking at his uh, Western Wayne Wildcats out there, trying to come up with some kind of a way to uh, get the offense going. Third and seven now for the Trojans. Fetter with a long count. 
And the South Paul will hand it off, and there goes number one, Matt oh, Kelly, nice. spinning, twisting, turning, rolling, and is finally dropped at about the 15-yard line. Oh, wow. What an effort. Not the biggest kid on the field, but wow. Well, he has that low center of gravity, tough to bring down, and uh, just an outstanding run by the 5'8", 165-pound senior. He used every bit of his body on that. Oh, hands, shoulders. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> and just picked up a nice quick 25 yards or so, another first down. Now they're wow. first and deep again. and Now it's imperative, clearly, uh, if you're Western Wayne, you need to stop here, get the ball back. It's, this is this is big series in the game. Fetter will hand it off to Musgrave, and Musgrave goes behind his blockers and is stopped at the 11-yard line. Tyler Musgrave, uh, one of the uh, top two-way players in high school football in the area. Only a junior, Steve. He's back another year, 6'1", 205. As you guys are saying, a lot of size, a lot of size on this North Pocono team, maybe wearing Western Wayne down a little bit, maybe on this opening night, so you can see a little more control of the line of scrimmage, pushing them off the ball a little bit. From the 11, second down and six, as the Trojans approach the line of scrimmage. Fetter calls out the signals. Fetter on a handoff to Musgrave, and a uh, couple of yards, and that's about all. Good play by Jake Nagel, side. tripping him up, Steve, in the backfield. That was a big, big play. So right now, nothing fancy by North Pocono. They're just uh, grinding it out in the late stages of quarter number three here in Varden with a 21 to nothing advantage. And they're set to go to work once again. Fetter, very calm and cool as he steps up to the line. Off the play fake, rolling left, firing on the run. Oh, almost oh, intercepted. Beautiful catch. He made it. Was he in bounds? Great, yes, great he was. Great catch. One-handed. Well, let's check that. Number 82. Matt Froelich on the receiving end. Look what the I The tight thought. end. How about that? That ball was tipped. He was at the right place at the right time. Well, sometimes you get lucky, and that's what happened, and uh, everything is going North Pocono's way. Yep. 27 to nothing, the Trojans with 3.16 to play third quarter. How about that? When it's going your way. Hunter is on to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Fetter. Wow, line drive shot. That's good. There's a break in the action with 3.16 to play in the third, and the Trojans rolling. They lead it 28 to nothing over Western Wayne here on Adams Cable High School Football. When your car does this. <laughs> call us first. Every job is perfect or it doesn't leave the shop. That's the motto at Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale. In an accident, remember, it is your car and your choice to choose your repair center. Call Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale, well known for integrity, safety, and craftsmanship. For more information concerning your rights and the 10 things you need to know before having your car repaired, go to their website, bestinsautobody.com. Good luck to all area teams. From Tony, Mike, Jeff, and the staff at Bestins Auto Body and Collision Center, Gordon Avenue, Carbondale. The Gabriel family and the staff at Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated of Carbondale send best wishes to our local athletes and teams for a successful season. In your time of need, call 282-1219 for the ultimate in professional service from Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale. Back to the gridiron for more Adams Cable High School football.
Tom Miner tees it up for North Pocono, leading 28 to nothing over the Western Wayne Wildcats. Three yard deep for Western Wayne, short kick, bouncing around, picked up at the 18 yard line. And that is for Western Wayne, that is Colby Salter on the return. And Western Wayne will go back on the offensive attack and try to generate something. Now try to get something going here as they uh, have been shut out thus far in the ball game with three minutes and 10 seconds to play in the third quarter. And, and Steve and Nick, you've got to be impressed with the you know, North Pocono, many guys stepping up, Matt Kelly, Tom Miner, Matt Froelich. They're getting a lot of contributions from a lot of guys tonight. They're, they, and that's good. When you're a high school team, you need you need to you know make teams defend you all over the place. So you really can't lock on one guy on this So you're North not Pocono. one dimensional. Yeah. Right? They've played in three quarterbacks tonight. And they've yeah. <laughs> and, throwing it nice. And they're not afraid to throw it. He's right. First down and 10, the Western Wayne Wildcats. As Scott Walk this time will come up under center. He'll go with the ground game. Couple on the play, and that's about all. Right up the middle. Matt Slagus again tripping, trick, tripping the uh, the ball carrier up in the backfield, coming off the field now, but. They've gotten penetration, Nick, into the backfield tonight. That's really hurt the running game. It's, it's disrupted the passing game, too. So they've been in the backfield a little bit too much tonight, you know, if you're a Wildcat fan. Well, especially a lot a lot of Western Wayne's runs have been, you know, counters and, and, and things of that nature, stretch plays, where penetration is going to just absolutely blow it up before it even begins. Now here's the second straight trips right, Nick. Uh, Nick. Walk will operate out of the shotgun, fires, and the pass is complete in front of the North Pocono Trojan bench. And Walk had time to throw, French. throw on, that, on that play, so, you know, turns into a positive game. Kenny French on the receiving end, a senior at 5'9 and 155 pounds, wearing number eight. He may have to do that now, Steve, the rest of the game. I think he's going to have to go into the playbook with the trips and the, and the twins ride and, you know, and. and that seems like that's been their best plays. Third and three. Here's your trips to this side now. Okay. And Walk will direct some traffic and take the snap. Rushes on, fires under pressure, passes incomplete. Off the fingertips of Sauter. And it's fourth down, so uh, Western Wayne three and out once again. I like the call, though. I, li I like the call over the middle. You got to attack. You got to be aggressive at this point in the game when you're down. And uh, Stevens, who's had a very busy night, is on to punt for Western Wayne. And Josh Stevens with an end over and kick. It will get a Western Wayne roll. And Kelly will let it roll and it continues to roll inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line of North Pocono. So good job by Stevens and the Trojans will bring its offense onto the football field once again leading 28 to nothing. And we have a player down on the field for Western Wayne with a buck 35 on the clock. So uh, we'll go to a quick break and return with more high school football from Varden after this timeout. What does it mean to be an expert? Does it mean getting the job done right? Or being able to pinpoint a problem and quickly find a solution? Whatever the meaning, the team at NJS are your experts in hydraulic and pneumatic components. So whether you need a custom hose built on the spot or a cylinder repaired from the ground up, the experts at NJS are there when you need them. And with the area's largest hose and fittings warehouse, NJS has thousands of the parts you need in stock and ready to go. NJ NJS Route 6 Mayfield online at NJSCO.com. NJS is proud to call this area home and proud to sponsor our area athletes on Adams Cable Channel 7. Back to the gridiron for more Adams Cable High School football. Back at Varden. 
with a minute 35 seconds remaining here in the third quarter and the Trojans leading by the score of 28 to nothing. There was a timeout on the field and uh, Western Wayne player was uh, looks like Dylan Walk wearing number 28. He's coming to the bench. Could be a cramp and uh, We'll get back to more action. Well, he's going to be a big part of this offense going forward. He's only a freshman, so you'll you'll see his brother throwing to him this year and next year. So they're going to need they're going to need him, Steve. Oh, definitely a freshman, 5'7", uh, 145 pounds. Good future ahead of him. As North Pocono will go back to work, and uh, once again. Napolitano, Larry Lapanitano running the offense for North Pocono as he hands it off. Fumble. And loose ball, and uh, Western Wayne, I believe, will have it. There's the break they needed. Well, sometimes you need that one little turnover in a key situation to get your offense going. So let's see if the Wildcats can capitalize, trailing the Trojans 28 to nothing with 126 to play, third quarter. Good aggressive play, stripping the ball. Sometimes you're, you're reaching in to strip it. Well, this is the best field position of the evening for the Western Wayne Wildcats. Oh, by far, too. And we'll see if they could take advantage of it right here. Maybe hard-pressed to see if Western Wayne really even crossed midfield tonight. On the first down play, the handoff will go to the tailback, and... Uh, he draws a crowd and advances the football to the 15-yard line. Tomasetti getting the call. Joe Tomasetti, a senior, 5'7", and 175 pounds. Second down and five. But it's positive, Steve. It's getting forward three, four yards, and, you know, you punch one in here before the end of the quarter. You got a little momentum. Here come the Wildcats to the line of scrimmage with under one minute to play, third quarter. Walk. With the handoff, Tomasetti gets the call once again. Picks up about two on the play, off right tackle. Draws the crowd quickly. And the final 29 seconds will begin to tick away here in Varden. 28 to nothing, your score, North Pocono and the Western Wayne Wildcats trying to hit the end zone here late in the third quarter. 10 seconds on the clock as Walk will come up to the line of scrimmage. And Scott Walk off the play fake, fires the pass. Was it complete? That's the big question. Complete, yes, it yes. was. That is complete at the 10-yard uh, line. And that will bring it into third quarter First action down. here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden with North Pocono leading Western Wayne 28 to nothing on Adams Cable High School football. Enjoy the feel of deep, rich luxury. Get the drama of radiant color and experience the timeless beauty, comfort, and durability of carpeting from Tom's Floor Shop and Childs. Tom's Floor Shop offers a large selection of hardwood, laminate, vinyl, ceramic tile, and carpeting on display in their showroom. Rely on Tom's Floor Shop for expert installation. All roads lead to where great floors begin at Tom's Floor Shop. Exit 6 off the Casey Highway in Childs. Welcome back to Varden as we get set for the fourth quarter of play on this Friday night. It's opening night of high school football and the North Pocono Trojans putting it all together through three quarters, leading Western Wayne 28 to nothing. Steve Young, Dave Serra, Nick Homick with all of the action here tonight in Varden. Great to have you on board. Next week we will be in the pioneer city of Carbondale for Carbondale area and Montrose. Airtime 645 right here on 7. Glenn Muskowski will be back from his vacation as uh, Glenn celebrates his 50th wedding anniversary with his lovely wife Anne. They are in Italy this weekend. Congratulations to them. And Glenn will be back on the broadcast. And, uh, of course, we can't wait to hear how his trip was to Italy. Nick and I, Steve, aren't even alive that long. I know. <laughs> Right? Combined, you know. right there? Yeah, well, oh. <laughs> no, no. We, we ain't that young, Nick. 
<laughs> That's a great Come one. Come on, you're supposed to say yes. Well, we're not. No. <laughs> oh, gosh. So right now, the Western Wayne Wildcats with their best field position of the evening. The football is just at the 10-yard, just inside the 10-yard line. It's first down for Western Wayne as uh, quarterback Scott Walk up under center. And the handoff to Tomasetti, and Tomasetti hammers up the gut of that North Pocono defense. Takes the football just inside the five. Well, first and goal, you know, you want the touchdown, and he's working on Joe Tomasetti here on this drive. He's taking a look at his team, other personnel that he has, and, you know, he's, he may have found his, uh, his uh, uh, Joe Tomasetti contribute to that backfield. You know, Tomasetti's come in, and he's picked up a quick, I'd say, 15, 20 yards here. He has. He has, Nick. You're right. Yeah, he's getting four yards, four yards. It's all positive, too. Yeah, absolutely. Second down and goal for Western Wayne. Tomasetti gets the call once again. Right up the middle, stacked up at about the two-yard line. Western Wayne continues to pound the football. Now, do you go with Tomasetti up the middle again, or... Uh, you got two plays to pick up three yards. No question, Nick. You're right. He's got to go for it on fourth, clearly. And he's bringing his quarterback over, Coach McDonough. You see, he's bringing him over, giving him the play, getting him right back in there quick. Coach Coach John LaSavage used to do that a lot, too. Sometimes, you know, games, you don't shove, shovel the plays in and out with receivers or backs. He's calling him over. He wants to get this drive right, and he wants to get a touchdown. Third down and goal for Western Wayne as Walk. Will roll out left side. Great there he call. goes, and he's got the touchdown. Great Perfect. call. Just thinking about a rollout, guys. Do you continue to pound the football up the middle, and Don McDonough calls the rollout, and uh, Scott Walk scores the touchdown. It's 28 to six. Opening moments of the fourth quarter. He faked me out. He sold it. He <laughs> sold it really good, Steve. Yes, I mean, he did. And, and you know, and that's what it took. Sometimes that's what you do. He's quick enough to get to the corner. He did. He beat the defense. He's got his team on the board. So Western Wayne will attempt the extra point. It will be Stevens out of the hold of Walk for the point after. No good. He might have got roughed. So Nick, it puts it on what? The one and a half? Do you go for two? Oh, my what do you have to lose? Yeah. Roughing the kicker. Still needs the four scores, but, you know. Yeah. Josh, Josh Stevens has a cannon for a leg, so. Well, right now, Don McDonough trying to uh, figure out what he's going to do. I think he he's wants call a timeout. timeout. So we will go to a break as Don McDonough and the coaching staff talks it over with the Wildcats trailing 28 to six on Adams Cable High School football. The Waymart Building Center carries quality materials for every job, including new home construction, remodeling, or that simple weekend project. The Waymart Building Center will supply everything to make your job easy, including plumbing and electrical supplies, hardware, tools, and paint. Remember, you don't have to drive far to find building or remodeling supplies. Stop by and see Chuck at your hometown building center, the Waymart Building Center. Now is the time to kick off that fall remodeling project and stop in and see the gang at Waymart Building Center for all the supplies you need. The Waymart Building Center, proud supporter of Western Wayne High School football. 28 to 6 your score. It is North Pocono leading Western Wayne. The roughing the kicker penalty will give Western Wayne the football. And will they go for two? Yes, they will. And uh, the play has been sent in by head coach Don McDonough. So here we go with Scott Walk to set them down. Tomasetti got the call but was stacked up. Tomasetti still fighting for yardage, did not get it. Is no good. It's for the 28. 
So we have a timeout on the field with the score 28 to 6. We'll be going to Nick Homick for an update on uh, some scores around the area, but a big thanks to all of our fine sponsors, Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, locally owned and trusted since 1929, Nick's Excavating and Paving, Main Street Sunoco, buy your local Napa Auto Parts store, Tonkin Auto Supply, the White's Crossing Sports Shop, Beston's Body Shop and Collision Center, Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services in Incorporated. A big thanks to NJS Systems and Controls, Route 6 Mayfield. Of course, the Waymart Building Center, Tom's Floor Shop and Childs, the Waymart Deli, and your starting lineups presented today by the Roselle Department Store in Carbondale. All right, you want some scores here? Oh, yes, definitely, yeah. Nick. Let's bring us up well, Bring us up to date. Let's get started. Right now in the third quarter with 11-16 to go, Lakeland has a 28-7 lead against Northwest. End of three, Scranton and Dallas still tied at seven. End of three, Lake Lehman leads Lackawanna Trail 24-0. How about this barn burner down, down at Pittston? Abington Heights takes a 3-0 lead. <laughs> 244 to go in the third quarter on a 41-yard field goal by Colin McCreary. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive for high school. That is impressive. Valley View up 21-0 uh, midway through the third quarter. Now here's your kickoff, and from the 32, and up back from North Pocono will carry the football to the 45-yard uh, line. Michael Kowalski on the return for the Trojans, and uh, that's where they will set up shop offensively. First down and 10 from that point at the 45. The theory there is, you, you know, you do the short squib quick, you may hit it off a lineman and get, it's kind of like a somewhat of an onside kick without doing it, but I, I see the logic there. I probably would have did the same thing. You know, you're hoping for the quick turnover. So now you just got to play defense, Nick, as you know, and Steven, get the ball back, and you never know. They, they've got quick, quick score capability, this Western Wayne offense. Hey. North Pocono put the ball on the turf last last possession. Any update on the uh, Lakeland game, Nick? The 28-7. Okay. And the uh, toss play, and it goes to Kelly around the right side. Cross midfield. Kelly very close to that first down marker. They've had a hard time defending the perimeter tonight, Nick, with that toss. Well, Kelly has not made it, their job any easier on that perimeter. He's, he's a very shifty runner. 5'8", 165 pounds. Has great speed, as Nick mentioned. Very shifty, tough to defend. He's like a Darren Sproles type, type of runner. First down and 10 for North Pocono, leading 28 to 6, with 9.40 left to play in the football game. Luke Fetter. On a handoff right up the middle, nothing fancy right here. You know, you talked about uh, Coach McDonough calling Scott Walk over to the uh, sideline with the play. How about Valley View when Frank Pizzolia used to order? He would alternate quarterbacks on different plays. Yeah, yeah. he did that he at did points. That, yeah, did that in points in his career. Two different quarterbacks. Never heard three, though. <laughs> No, no. But uh, Pazalia would alternate them. One quarterback would take first down. Another one be, would be in for second down. Here tonight, Greg Dolan did uh, spread it out a little bit on different uh, drives. As Fetter, the southpaw, with a perfect pass far side of the field, just shy, very close, I should say, to the first down. Boy, that uh, chain gang has to bail out there. That's a dangerous area when that play is coming right at you. You've got to be paying attention, Steve. Well, that's uh, just shy of the first down by about a half yard. There's Tom Miner again, Steve. So the game plan here, clock management leading 28 to 6. Another first down. Keep the football on the ground and continue to keep that clock running. Better up under center with the eye formation in the backfield. And once again, it looks like Kelly dancing around after he takes the handoff. And the football placed at the 33-yard line. 
So right now, North Pocono in no hurry to get to the line of scrimmage. They are going to run that play clock down with the 28 to 6 lead. Nearing seven and a half minutes to play fourth quarter. And there's the handoff. And once again, North Pocono keeps it on the ground. They're trying and, to strip it. I think that's Courtney yeah. Harp back, Steve. And uh, that was Harp on the carry. And the whistle didn't blow. Uh, that's the ironic part about that play. Looked as though uh, Courtney Harp, like his forward progress, was stopped. And they'll mark it at the 29-yard line. Generous spot there, Nick. Real generous. <laughs> I can see the Western, you know, the Western Wing coaches are asking, you know, the the linesman, you know, where was that? But need to stop. Obviously, need to stop here. Need to need to turn over if you're Western Wayne. If you're North Pocono, keep doing what you're doing. Now there's a flag. Two flags. We get a sideline warning. Yep. Oh, delay again. Delay of game against uh, oh, North sorry. Pocono. Let's. A legal substitute. Yeah. Clock now stopped with 6.45 to play in the fourth quarter. Twenty-eight to six, your score, the Trojans, as they are rocking and rolling here on opening night. And now they will come up to the line of scrimmage and uh, with six and a half minutes to play, Senior quarterback Luke Fetter up under center, movement on the line, and there's penalty flags again. Mighty gave it back. Yep. And we'll have Dave Sarah check in on a uh, Carbondale area score, see if we have an update from Eric Larson. Carbondale 22 12 in the third. Mm. Oh, how about score that? game down there. Now, fans really enjoying themselves on opening night of high school football. Scranton Prep up 14 0 on Dunmore. 535 to go in the third. How about Nick with the new technology as Kelly mm -hmm. zigzags his way to the 25 yard line? Well, Nick, I'm the last man standing. I you guess are. I'm going to have to I move ahead and get, and get one of the. What is that, an iPhone? No, it's a droid. A what? <laughs> My wife got the iPhone. What, what do you actually have? I have one of those galaxies. No, oh, that's okay. I have. It's not a bad piece of equipment, Nick. No, I, it's getting the job done. But no. I'm an Apple guy myself. But well, I, I think I'm going to have to. Uh, like they say, Dave, if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's free, give me three, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Fetter to Kelly sweeps around the right side, and there goes Kelly heading for the end zone, and another North Pocono touchdown. 24-yard run. He's certainly done it all tonight. Matt Kelly, the tailback. Nick, this, this doesn't look like a four and six team. No, not at all. I, I'm going to be willing to say they're going not going to be that again this year. They are going to create some headaches for teams this year. They're pretty balanced, Steve. That's the thing. You know, they you got are. guys who can, you know, that's, the, that's hard to defend at any level. You know, you, know, you get a couple of W's under your belt here early in the year, you're going to start to see them firing all cylinders. You know, these little mistakes that they have in the first game, you won't see them by the third game. Bryce Hunter for the point after. No good. And with five and a half minutes left to play in the fourth quarter, the Trojans lead the Wildcats 34 to six on Adams Cable High School football. The Weimar Deli is a proud supporter of Western Wayne Wildcat football. Call 488-5790 and place your order from the many taste tempting selections the Weimar Deli menu has to offer like their delicious breakfast sandwiches, dinner baskets, specialty wraps, tasty deli salads, and of course, the famous Waymar Deli fresh hot and cold subs. From your friends at the Waymar Deli, good luck Western Wayne Wildcats. 
Back at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex here in Varden, opening night of high school football, and the North Pocono Trojans are in cruise control, leading Western Wayne 34-6 with 5.30 remaining in the fourth quarter. Matt Kelly with a 24-yard touchdown run. Boy, he has played a great football game here tonight, and the Trojans will tee it up and kick off to the Western Wayne Wildcats. Well, he scored three touchdowns tonight. He'll be, you know, he'll get some votes for Athlete of the Week when they pick it. Uh, he's just tough. I mean, you can see he's he, one of those guys that just won't go down. I mean, very strong. Legs are always moving. He runs high. I mean, he's he's going to be a handful for a lot of teams this year. Not a bad one-two punch to have with him, him and Harp in the backfield, and yes. you got some. Uh, you got Miner out there, and then you throw in a couple of the quarterbacks. Miner's kick, a line drive Knee shot. Was down, he was down though for uh, Scott Smith, freshman, 5'5", 145 pounds. There's a lot of freshmen in this game for both teams. Well, that's what uh, North Pope... not have a freshman program? I don't think he does. I was talking to him a little bit before the game. I think he's bringing them up. He's, dre he's dressing at Western Wayne about, about 30, 35. North Pocono looks like a little more, more, more dressed. But, yeah, no, he said he was going to play a lot of young young, young kids tonight. And How about Carbon, though? Did he get a freshman program back? Yes. So that's big. You know, if you don't have the numbers to, to field a freshman team, that's one thing. But, you know... I'm a big proponent of having keeping those freshman programs going at all costs. Wildcats go to work offensively from their own 18. Scott Walk on a handoff. And they go off the left side. So right here, Western Wayne, they, they will avert the shutout with the uh, six points here tonight, but for the most part, uh, they have found the offense against this North Pocono defense. The going has been tough tonight. Third, third big, Jake Prisoir on the tackle, six foot 250, Trotter, Ryan, 250. They sure they're, are. They're, they're, they're a little bit big tonight to handle for Western Wayne. Now keep in mind that uh, Greg Dolan has uh, for the started a lot of these players since 2013, so uh, they're They've seen a lot of playing times. They took their lumps over the years, and here tonight you're seeing the end result. Yeah, it's eventually, all coming together. Eventually the youth grows up. You know, and the game experience is, is, is so key. Yeah, you can't teach it. You have to experience it. And uh, this team is, like we said, it's uh, they're going to make some noise this year. They're going to give teams some teams fits, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it will all play out in the end. I, I'm glad we got them on. I'm glad we got to see North Pocono. It's a team, you know, we've never seen, you know, on Adams before. But there is a coverage area out there in Jefferson Township. And yeah, great to have uh, the viewers and listeners and viewers really, from uh, the North Pocono area tuned in. Oh, we're really glad we can get them on, and especially against Western Wayne. Get two teams here in our coverage area. But I'm impressed. I really am. From the 36-yard uh, line, it will res it will be second down and about eight yards to go for Western Wayne as we near four minutes to play, and the Wildcats on the short end of a 34-6 score. Walk out of the gun. Walk uh, thought about a pass, and now it takes the sack. He wanted to uh, fire a pass to Kilgallen, but could not pull the trigger. And I believe Kilgallen was open. 62, Matt Caputo, Steve, I believe, in the sack. Again, just not enough time to throw tonight. North Pogan was in their backfield all night, and, and that just creates nightmares for an offense. Very, very hard to... As we mentioned, next week... We will be in the Pioneer City of Carbondale when Montrose will come into town to take on Carbondale area. And we will be on the air with the pregame show starting at 6.45 right here on Channel 7. Walk out of the shotgun. Quick pass near side. Dylan Walk on the receiving end at the 37. Dylan Walk, a freshman, 5'7", and 145 pounds. 
And again, North Pocono, Vinny Piscatelli, number 14, making the tackle. They've got a lot of young guys on defense. The other, the other linebacker, J.C. Gone, made the tackle the previous play, you know, another sophomore. So they could be good for years to come here, North Pocono. Well, you take a look. Metzger, Slagus, Prisbara, Froelich, Kelly, Gone, Musgrave, Butler, Kowalski, Dial, and Blaine. That's a Under good Klasner. defensive unit. Stevens in to punt once again for Western Wayne. This football will bounce, get a wildcat roll to about the 31. And with 2.49 left in the fourth quarter, North Pocono will take over possession of the football with a comfortable 34-6 lead over the Wildcats. Better get the rosters out, guys. You're going to probably see some big substitutions here. Yeah, I think so. Well, these guys probably, these coaches want to see what they have. I mean, that's, that's part of the game. Nick, were you surprised Western Wayne offensively didn't do more? I mean, success-wise, I mean, is North Pocono's defense as good as, as good as we think? They might be. I, I think North Pocono's defense is very good. Uh, you know, Western Wayne, we touched on it a little bit. They had a lot of people to replace up front. Uh, and their youth has shown a little bit, too. It wasn't a glaring weakness, but I think you're, I think you're right, Dave. I think it's a little bit of both both North Pocono's defense creating problems for Western Wayne. Well, you guys were saying earlier, you guys thought North Pocono could, you know, they they might come in here and and excel, and they have. I, what I'm most impressed with is they excelled on all three facets of the game. You know, they... Yeah, the special teams. Defensive touchdown, special teams touchdown. Freshman quarterback Donnie Blaine running the offense now as they... Go with the ground game. Off right tackle. They, they threw it effectively when they needed to. Yeah, they did. They, 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 they got positive yards. I, really, you didn't see any negative plays from Pocono. They didn't hurt themselves tonight. Penalties. No, Western Wayne had a few too many penalties. Coach McDonough is not going to be happy about that next week in practice. Ta well, yeah. You know, they have to iron out the stupid mental mistakes. Right. And, and I say stupid mental mistakes like jumping off sides. Right. Especially when you're on playing the defensive line. You know, we understand you want to get off the ball and things, but... You know, when you're jumping off sides on first down, that's not good. He'll work. He's got to work. He'll work on that next week. Yeah, you got to work on those types of mistakes. Listen, you're going to have penalties in every game. Nobody ever plays a, a perfect game. But when it comes to procedure calls and, and jumping off sides, those are the things you have to eliminate. And it's a long season. Yeah. I mean, you know, Walk had two interceptions, but they weren't. I mean, you know, one was on a tip ball, and the other one was right. he just threw behind them. Uh, on a rollout. So really, it wasn't like he just was just throwing like, you know, dumb interceptions or anything like that. So those are correctable mistakes too. Really, not really any fumbles to speak of for Lester Wayne. So there's positives to build on. Your defense played, I mean, yeah, you gave up 34 points, but I, I think your defense played well. Kept a minute until yeah. the, yeah, they kept a minute for, you know, a while. And then again, the, the interception, the punt return, that doesn't. Yeah. You're right. I, you take away that special teams and defensive touchdown, you're looking at a 21-6 game right now. Right. Right, and then you hit the two-point conversion, tw you know, 21-8, three scores get you in it. Yeah, that's true. You're right, Nick. Third down and nine for North Pocono. Donnie Blaine on the handoff, and it goes to Greg Stavala, who was in the ball game, a senior. senior. You know, and with under a minute left. Western Wayne goes out to Tunkhannock next week and, you know, what could be a winnable game for them. I, I don't know what Tunkhannock has coming back. Northwest could them. be a winnable game. Yeah. You know, Northwest is losing tonight to Lakeland. They lost a lot of kids off of that team last year that they had. Um, it's early. Yeah, ex exactly. You, you grow leaps and bounds from uh, week one to week two. Clock down to 22 seconds. North Pocono quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Play clock down to one. They just get the playoff in time. And they will go with the running attack up to the 40-yard line. And that will do it. As the North Pocono Trojans open up the 2015. Let's check this now. They stop the clock with 10 seconds left. Well, guys, I can tell you, we're, we're going to be the first game done tonight. Because there's other games, Valley View, Mid Valley, just going to the third quarter, just going really? into the fourth quarter. Really? Yeah, 21 nothing Valley View. Real quick, we'll run this down. Uh, Dallas is still in the third quarter. 
Uh, against Scranton, 14-7, they're up. And they just started the fourth quarter at, Dun against, uh, at Dunmore, prep up 21-0. So the North Pocono Trojans will open up the 2015 high school football season with a 34-6 win over the Western Wayne Wildcats. Congratulations to Greg Dolan and the coaching staff as uh, the Trojans pick up their first win while the Wildcats suffer the loss as uh, the Trojans next week. Well, they will be at Honesdale, followed by games with Wyoming area and West Scranton. For the Wildcats, they will be on the road at Tunkanic, at Northwest area, and at Mid Valley. So uh, Western Wayne opens up here at home, and then for three weeks they are on the road. They'll come back in week number five with a home game against Holy Cross. So a very impressive performance here tonight by the North Pocono Trojans, who uh, last year were 4-6. and six. They get off to a win here tonight against Western Wayne, and congratulations on a well-played football game by North Pocono. Well, Steve, you know, North Pocono's Matt Kelly, whale of a game. I had him 11 carries, 96 yards, but he he was big in all facets. He, he came to play. He... Uh, he just quick, very quick off the ball. They couldn't catch him on the perimeter. And again, like Nick was saying, and we were saying, you know, Western Wayne takes some positives out of this. And I want to thank uh, Shane Hennigan from the Scranton Times, who was very helpful tonight uh, with uh, with the play, with some plays and some spotting. So, um, Nick, again, I think you know North Polk, a very impressive win on the road. You got to give them that. Oh, great way to start the season. Uh, I, I just think this is something that really can catapult the start the rest of your season, especially coming off of a four and six year. That I talked about at the top. One of the teams you got to watch out for are these, these tweener teams who are five, around 500 mark. And North Pocono is certainly one of them. 152 yards passing, I had them. So they, yeah, they were over 100 yards easily in the rushing and in the passing. And it, it, when you're balanced like that, it, it, in, in, like I said, especially at the high school level, hard to defend. So uh, well played, Steve. Everybody played hard. Kids played hard. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, Coach McDonough, you know, not into moral victories, but they hung tough. But a little bit, little bit of a little couple too many mistakes. They'll correct and they'll going forward, they'll be ready. Early, early mistakes definitely hurt the Western Wayne Wildcats, which resulted in poor field position. North Pocono took advantage of that. Once they got going, uh, Western Wayne was never really able to generate the, those serious offensive attacks that they're known for. And uh, that was the ball game here tonight. So Nick, uh, one in the books already. Can you believe it? <laughs> can't We're, believe it. I can't believe it. We're looking what forward we to opening in night. Ten weeks. I can't believe the season's over. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking forward to opening night, and here the North Pocono Trojans open it up with a 34 to 6 win over the Western Wayne Wildcats. Guys, great broadcast. Had a lot of fun. Glenn Muskowski will be back next week, and uh, we'll have more action for you from. The Andrew J. Sarah Sports Complex when the Montrose Meteors will take on the Carbondale Area Chargers. So, for Dave Sarah and Nick Homick, I'm Steve Young. Thanks for joining us and so long from the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex. Today's presentation of Adams Cable High School Football between the North Pocono Trojans and the Western Wayne Wildcats was brought to you by Adams Cable Service. And by the following Carbondale sponsors. Figlomini Drugstore, locally owned and trusted since 1929. Nick's Excavating and Paving. Main Street Sunoco. By your Napa Auto Parts Store. Tonkin Auto Supply. White's Crossing Sports Shop. Beston's Body Shop and Collision Center. Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated with locations at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street. NJS Systems and Controls, Route 6 Mayfield. By your one-stop lumber and hardware center, the Waymark Building Center. Tom's Floor Shop, Main Street Childs. Waymark Deli. The starting lineups for today's game are presented by Roselle Department Store, Carbondale. Join us again for more high school football next week from Carbondale when the Montrose Meteors face the Carbondale Area Chargers here on Adams Cable Channel 7.